ladies and gentlemen who would like to sit back and listen to a lecture titled the media social media and national security balancing the free flow of information with responsible journalism in nigeria and this will be brought by none other than our own and illustrious son of the soil professor umar Pate, the vc federal university Kashiri. Can we appreciate right, what the applause for him, please, as, as he, he makes up. his way up? Thank you. Your Excellency, happily represented by the Deputy Governor, the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, also happily represented, the former Secretary to the State of the Federal Government of Nigeria, happily represented by a former Chairman of the Federal University, Mukari. Architect Lawrence Mbale, our royal fathers, members of the State Executive Council, recipients, friends and relatives, members of the TMG News, as well as the publisher, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Let me start by congratulating Tom and the TMG group on a very successful journey so far in the business of journalism. I know it must have been tough, it must have been rough, but thank God they have been succeeding. And success, as is always said, has many fathers, while failure is an orphan. We are here to celebrate the success of the progress being recorded by that particular group. And in appreciation, it's also acknowledging, as well as appreciating the wonderful contribution of some of our elders in this community. Our royal fathers, our leaders in the political wing, people from the business groups, as well as people whose names can hardly even feature in the news. But today, TMG is recognizing them. And I think it is a worthy effort that all of us should identify with. I was asked specifically to speak on the media, social media, and the security situation in Nigeria. Well, it is a very long topic. Unfortunately, I don't think we have the time here for us to go to the details of the topic. So what I intend to do is to give us an overview of some of the issues that should provoke us to think more and perhaps brainstorm and see what each one of us can contribute. We don't have to be in the media for us to talk, for us to contribute, and for us to know that things need to be better than they are today, particularly on the security front. And as they say, security is everyone's business. So it is understandable that the TMG decided to focus on this issue. There must be peace, there must be security for journalism to thrive. Now, for us in the media, and I will combine both social and the conventional media, I'll be speaking interchangeably. As we say, journalism or the media is in transition today globally. The media that we know some years back is not the same media that we are seeing today. A number of reasons will account for that. Because of the advent of the internet, as well as the revolution in information and communication technologies, there are profound and indeed remarkable changes landscape of the media globally, as well as in the practice of gathering, processing, and dissemination of news. Unlike in the past, where the conventional media had the monopoly of news dissemination, today the story is completely different. You have several new owners, you have several platforms, and you have several ways by which people collect, process, and digest information that come their way. Now, we have just talked about the progress that the internet has brought, particularly just to journalism. 
But we know that it is not only journalism or the media that has been affected by the advent of the internet or the revolution in information and communication technologies. Almost every aspect of life on the globe that you can think of is profoundly affected, directly or indirectly. And today, all of us, in one way or another, are beneficiaries. And to some extent also, in some cases, maybe victims of some of these changes. But for life, changes are necessary. And the current global changes, the digital revolution we are experiencing, is something that we cannot stop. It's something that we cannot confront. Because the time has come. So, what are also the other sides? There are also implications. These implications are numerous, are limitless, and like they have created limitless opportunities, they have also created limitless challenges. But these challenges, profound as they may seem, are things that we have to live with and come up with creative ways on that. For this year, let me give you four or five major challenges created by the advent of the internet and the revolution in information and communication technologies. One, the issue of funding. In the past, media organizations could easily depend on advertising, could easily depend on subventions, and could easily depend on sales of their products and make money and survive. Today, that concept has collapsed. Advertising could no longer take media organizations to. For reasons, there are multiple players that are also angling for the same revenue that the conventional media is supposed to also angle for. But above all, there are the big global media organizations like Amazon, Google, them, the big guys. They also advertise on their platforms. And because they advertise, advertisers go to them. So the money that should have gone to the conventional media is now going to the media global text, whose advantages are far wider. Then there are also emergence of younger, smaller, and better organized media platforms on the internet. If you take a census of how many radio stations and TV stations do we have in Nigeria today, we have about 270 something there about if you check the MBC platform. But we have far more number of radio stations that are not registered but are online, visible, and are operating from Nigeria. If you are to talk of newspapers, how many conventional newspapers do we have operating in Nigeria today? But again, go to the internet and see the number of platforms, the number of media organizations that are operating online. And they are also angling for the same advert revenue, which means they are now sharing the money with the normal organization. Take TMG as an example. TMG is a small media organization with global advantages of networking. They are competing with, let's say, ABC Yola, which is a huge bureaucratic setup with, a, with so many numbers of staff to pay for. Which means, and they are also going for the same adverts. So you can now understand why we have serious funding challenges in the media organizations. They cannot pay salaries appropriately, and where they do, the salaries are miserable, and they cannot also pay for a lot of their responsibilities. And people cannot pay. How many of you here buy newspapers daily? And because you don't buy newspapers, you don't pay for the radio services that you listen to, you don't pay for the TV that you watch, where do they make their money to operate? So because of that, there are so many unethical practices, there are so many ways that people are coming up in order to survive. And we shall later look at what are the implications of this. The second major challenge is that of technology. Technology is the window that connects the media and the rest of the world. Like we say, there are five R's in media business. You have the issue of reach, you have the issue of revenue, you have the issue of resilience, and the others. So you cannot reach audiences without 
having the right technology. You need the equipment, you need the gadgets, and these gadgets are imported from outside Nigeria. You have to pay big money for you to master these technologies in terms of competence, as well as in terms of the material machines that you need for these things to happen. Today, the big media organizations you know in the world, name them, they all depend on technology. So once your media organization is technology poor, you can be sure that your audience will also be highly respected and the quality of what you offer will also be poor. And the poorer your quality, the less the number of people you are going to have as audiences. And also, less money you are going to attract in terms of advertising. Then the third element, which is also a huge challenge for media organizations, is that of content. Content is what connects the organizations with its audiences. Platform is, I mean, the technology creates the ability for you to link. Content is what will make you to keep your audiences, your offerings. And content creation requires intellect, requires resources, requires creativity. And all these things revolve to the issue of funding. So how can media organizations in Nigeria and even locally give information, give programs that people here can acknowledge and accept? And don't forget, because of technology, our local media organizations will also be competing with the international, like the BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, and all the big, big names. If you are talking about magazines like the Economist of London, the uh, London Times, New York Times, these are the newspapers that are also available on the net. So how can our local ones also here compete with them in terms of quality? And if we cannot, what connection do we have with our local audiences here? So we have that challenge also. Then the fourth one is that of credibility, which also has a very close relationship with the issue of insecurity. When you are talking about credibility in media business, you are talking about four things. You are talking of competence, you are talking of tru uh, truthfulness, you are talking of reliability, uh, relevance, as well as dynamism. Now, all of us hear the issues of fake news, misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, rumors, lies, as challenging credibility in the media that we all know as of today. But the conventional media may not necessarily be the major targets in this case, but the online media that we all have and we are all connected to have become agents of disinformation, agents of misinformation, agents of malinformation, agents of news. We have a lot of them engaged in that. And these are the major causes of some of the security challenges that we all experience. And why do we have that? Because today it is easy to start a media organization. All you need is with your small Android phone, your 100 Naira data, and you can shoot and you can write, you have become a quack journalist in town. And we see a lot you are on WhatsApp platform sending messages that you don't even know the source. You go up to places and shoot whatever you see and distribute. And at the end of the day, what happens? You poison the psychology of people. You distribute hate speech and cause dangerous thinking in the minds of people. Again, in Nigeria today, because of either poverty or insecurity, People at the back, excuse me, please, kind of I'm a teacher, and in my class, usually you have quietness. So, so what, 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 well, you can see what is happening today. We have so much localized ourselves, and wherever I go, I give this example. In the past, we used to travel amongst ourselves or in our communities, and we know ourselves. I can give you an example with myself. I went 
to Nasara Ojeren from my primary school, government college, my degree from my university, and so on, and so on, and so on. And my father lived in several places in Sheleng, in Guyu, in Wuba, in this as an area court judge. Because of that, I had the opportunity of knowing Adamawa a little, as at then. But today, the story is different. You have a child in the State Polytechnic here, or in Futi, the child will go to Futi Primary School, Futi Secondary School, Futi University, and will be working in Yola here. They will go and manipulate NYSC posting, maybe to Taraba here. And at the end of the day, this chap does not know Nigeria at all. What he knows is what's up, and all the messages that he gets on what's up is what will inform his understanding of Nigeria and Nigerians. And that is extremely dangerous. Today, people don't go on transfer except for those services like the army, the police. They are the only people who go on transfer. We are all restricted to our communities. And we do not appreciate what happens elsewhere. A citizen of Adamawa does not know what is happening in Plato. does not know what is happening in the creeks or rivers. He does not appreciate the effects of desertification in Yobe. So that empathy, that feeling of other Nigerians in us is missing. And our education has also become what? So localized. All the teachers in the faculty are from the same state. All the students are from the same state. And all the ideas are from the same area. At the end of the day, what kind of person are you going to train in the context of federal Nigeria? People who do not know themselves and who people who do not even appreciate what happens outside their own communities. And because of misinformation and the kind of dangerous messages that we circulate on WhatsApp, what happens? People get misinformed. And so people will be willing to kill on the basis that he is not part of my community. And what do we do? We ethnicize everything, we politicize everything, we provincialize everything, and we pol almost everything is religionized. So people speak to you from the basis of ethnicity, people speak to you on the basis of religiosity, not on the basis of merit, not on the basis of objectivity, not on the basis of that you are so and so and so, but simply because you are this, because you are that, therefore this is how you should be. We continuously stereotype. And the danger is when you create crisis online, it translates into crisis offline. And exactly this is what we are all paying for. And we shall continue to pay for it because technology, if not rightfully used, will continuously cause problems for all of us. And then the journalists themselves who work in the systems, we have that's the fifth aspect. Their own freedom as well as their safety. Because when you talk about media practice, you must also talk about the safety of the journalists who practice in the system. What is their political safety? What is their psychological safety? What is their economic safety? What is their social safety? What is their gender safety? What is their online safety? And once these safeties are not guaranteed, then you are going to have crisis in the quality of journalism. And if you have in crisis in the quality of journalism, you are going to have crisis in the quality of practice, which will now translate into poisoned information that will be poisoning the psychology of the citizens. And once the psychology is poisoned, there will be very dangerous interpersonal relationships in, among communities. And once the relationships are not properly defined, what do we have? Conflicts? Chaos, killings, blood, and a confusion enveloping the entire nation. Today, every part of Nigeria has its own part, portion of crisis. It is either Boko Haram, it is either area boys, it is either ethnic conflict, but the entire thing starts from the mind. Conflict starts from perception. So the media has a huge responsibility, particularly our social media. They need to be trained so that they will understand the implications of some of the actions that they take. We need to understand some of these issues relating to misinformation within the global context. And if we could do that, then on the ground, there will be safety, our people could understand themselves, and then Nigeria will be a better place. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's a long lecture that I will not want to go. 
waste your time. So I thank you very much for your time.